Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called a pink bikini. So the ingredients you need to make a pink bikini, two ounces of coconut rum, two ounces of amaretto liqueur, two ounces of raspberry lemonade, one ounce of club soda, and you're going to garnish with some raspberry. So add the coconut rum, the amaretto, the raspberry lemonade into a cocktail shaker filled with ice, shake for about five to 10 seconds, pour from the shaker into the glass, filling it three to four cups full, I'm assuming. Fill the remainder of the glass with club soda, garnish with raspberries, and enjoy. That is another cocktail brought to you by your tipsy homegirl. Check her out on Instagram and TikTok if you're interested in trying one of these cocktails. Ooh, Ooh. I got quick hands. Yeah, you That's do. That's a good coaster. Because it was coasting all the way to your mouth. <laughs> Baby, it was coasting. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Welcome back to Cocktail Story Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. I was trying to make sure I didn't get no raspberries at my straw. Uh, this tastes very, it tastes like vacation. It tastes very refreshing. I would have this with my breakfast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know I'm going to drink a lot of it today. So let's see, see how today goes. Um, what have you been up to? I had a fun filled weekend. Mm-hmm. I went to a few, did I go to a few different, you know, they kind of combined Juneteenth with Father's Day. So I did a lot in the day and it was all kind of combined, but I went to a party that was in the underground. Do you ever go to the underground? No, but I know that lately they've been doing a lot more like events there. They really have. And I'm always like, I'm not going to underground. It's, it's too much going on. And, but mm-mm. it's changed, right? Or no? Oh. It's, I almost stepped in Dookie on the street, but <gasps> well. it was, yeah, it was nasty, but it was fun. <laughs> uh-huh. There was some, it was like a party called the jump off. What's that? It was a little party. I don't know. Somebody invited me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. There were some uh-huh. listeners there. Shout out to the ones. One of the girls was in the twerk contest. They was Ooh. on stage twerking and working. I said, oh. That sounds like fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, did Father's Day stuff and went to the park. Did you go home? No, no, oh, no. Okay. Oh, I have a boyfriend now. Mm-hmm. He's dad. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, he ain't got no kids. You ain't got no kids. Was yeah. your brother? Okay, okay. Yeah, we were with his dad. And so it was fun. I, saw my, I had my nephew all weekend. Mm-hmm. How was that? You know, it hits different when you have kids for more than like a few hours. Mm -hmm. Like an overnight guest is always different, especially if it's a child. Little boys eat so much. Like I was like, Zane eats like a village, (laughs) like a village. I was like, is he a picky eater? He's not really picky. He just eats a lot. So if like there's a sandwich, he wants two and he eats the whole thing. We had crab legs. He ate eight clusters of crab legs and shrimp. Eight clusters or eight legs. It was eight clusters. The clusters with the fours on there. We started counting. We were like, Zane, how many did you? Because he kept grabbing the. He was. He had never had crab legs before. I didn't know that. That baby was eating. I was like, please don't oh get sick. Oh my gosh! Yeah. He had potatoes. He had corn. He had shrimp. He had two pieces of salmon. This is. <laughs> that baby was eating. I said, like, well, maybe he was hungry. <laughs> he was hungry, but we had fun. I took him to the Art of Brick immersive um, experience. One of those fever uh-huh. app activities. I love the fever app. Kiki, it was so much fun. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I took him and I took my boyfriend separately because I didn't know I was going to like it so much. I was like, Zane would like this. It's Legos built with like art, but it's like hundreds of thousands of Legos used to build like a human head or a Mm -hmm. body or something. And then like behind all of the pictures, he has this positive message about like life and it was just amazing. I was in there about to cry. It was beautiful. Uh-huh. It was really I've heard fun. of it and I've seen pictures, but I haven't been yet. Yeah, you got to go. I don't know how much longer it's here, but mm-hmm. I was really impressed and didn't think that I would have been because I don't play with Legos. Yeah. Like, who cares about Legos? I'm not a little boy. Right. <laughs> but you, I was in there like, oh my God, look at the Legos. What you uh, been up to? Um, what have I been up to? So this weekend we did our photo shoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll tell you guys why in a little bit, but we did a photo shoot. So that was cool. After that, I hung out with with my aunt so walker's mom lives in that area and she's child free 
for a little bit more than a month now. So like the whole summer, Walker's mm-hmm. in Louisiana with my grandparents. So she's been like hanging out and just doing stuff and having fun. And she just got back to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So we hung out that night and just caught up about a bunch of different stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I had plans. This was really a work weekend for me. I had to um, film some stuff for some uh, videos I'm working on, some food videos. It did not go well. Mm-hmm. So about to do that again. But I was feeling really ambitious. And I was like, you know what? I want to make a black ass meal for Juneteenth. You made meatloaf? Ew. Oh. <laughs> and I would not mean? put that for black. Um, oh, I hate meatloaf. You just made my stomach turn. <laughs> now I was going to do oxtails. So the plan was I'm going to sous vide the oxtail. Because you know I like to take like classic dishes and find ways to elevate them or new ways to cook them. So I was going to sous vide them. And that takes... Minimum 15 hours. The most is like 40 hours. hours. So like I put it in the bag, but it's like you just put it in the bag, you put it in the water bath and it cooks for days. You don't have to do anything. Mm. It's just going to be done. So it's not, it's kind of like crock pot, but longer and slower and more precise. So anyway, I didn't get the shit in there in time. Uh, So that didn't quite work out. So I'll be working on that, I guess, tonight for the next couple of days. But I got to get the videos done. And then I'm um, excited. And at least you got to eat some good food. Yeah. Well, I didn't cook that. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It didn't work out. So I ended up frying fish. And that's why I was like, I had to take two showers today to make sure I wasn't smelling too greasy. And I'm going to spray my hair with Beach 7 Hair. Beach 7 Hair is the company that y'all keep asking us about. I don't even know if they still sell the products. Sorry. They, well, what I do know is she ran out of the um, bougie beach. It's funny that you say that because I have been holding on to about this much left in my bottle. I mm-hmm. I like savor the spray. I'm just like, I spray a little on my hand and just like brush it on because it smells so good. It smells and so And it really good. knocks the smell. You would think this is an ad. This is not no ad. It's not an ad. We just like the product. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I just need us to take a moment and have a hair rant because... Let's do it because I'm tired. I have a scab in my head right here because I wanted my hair to be really full. I've had my tapings in at this point for two months. You need to take them out at this point. You can take them out and reapply, but Mm -hmm. it's like time and who'd be wanting to sit in the salon? Like, I just haven't felt like it. So I put some of my clip-ins in thinking that it'll be good. I got away from clip-ins because I think a lot of the clips have nickel in them and I think that I'm allergic um so it's caused a little scab right here it hurts but it's like when you make a hair appointment it's really really risky as a black woman to make a hair appointment on a day when you need to do anything other than just because you survive. might not make it you might not yeah or like people love to cancel and we're all human but like it, be a little less human today and be more robotic and get this shit done, bitch, because I need my hair done. The feeling that you feel when you have something to do, like a photo shoot. Right. And um, the hairstylist is like, I'm so sorry to do this to you. Or when they're like, hey, girl, oh, please don't cancel on me. I'll buy you lunch. Right. I'll, like, what is the problem? Bring little Pookie with what you. What do you need? Do you need a ride? I'll come pick you up. Please don't cancel. I will cook you a meal. Like, what is the problem? We got to go pick up your mama from the airport halfway through. Okay, but I need my hair done. I will give you my Hulu and Netflix password. What do you we need, We can watch movies. Ma'am? Please. I'll try to help you find a man. <laughs> Please. So we, we had our photo shoot and the girl that was, she was just going to curl my hair. I was like, can you, you just. You aren't even getting it washed. Mm-hmm, I'm getting my mm-hmm. hair done tomorrow. Thank God. I was like, could you just curl it? Because, you know, they just curled better and so she was like yeah yeah yeah, i got you i got you so the plan was to go before my makeup and then she was right. like i don't think i'm gonna be able to keep come right after your makeup couldn't come after my she said i'm just not and then she just stopped picking up the phone i was like it was just too late i had to go deep into my inner self and talk to myself because i wanted to have a mental breakdown yeah it's not fun when you're paying to have a photo shoot where you're supposed to look like a bad bitch and you come looking not yeah it's not and it's just like well what is this supposed to be giving because I you, thought, you tried to do something, your makeup's done. <laughs> your makeup is done, but like, what happened? Is this the morning after the fun times? Or like, what? Yeah, I get it. That shit is frustrating. Or like, when you clear out your day to like, like it's a braid day, so you know you got to clear out your day. <laughs> and you wait and you wait. You found the one day you could finally sit down and get pretty. Yes, and it's like, first of all, it's like, oh, I'm running late. Okay, I can deal with running late. It was already going to be all day. Do I have time to go to Starbucks? Yeah, girl. I'm going to give me a little something. coffee. When I ask them if they want something, they say no. And then I say, you want something for somewhere else? I get real nervous. You start praying. You literally yeah. like, God, I probably sure I won't ask you for nothing else. Like, please don't let her cancel. Yeah. And then it's just like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, something's wrong with my car. Okay, well, I can come pick you up. Drop a pin. Like, where are you talking about? Or I'll send you a car. Like, where are you at? 
If you just are, if you're hungover and some, I don't even mind if you are groggy and looking crazy doing, we don't have to talk. Makeup and hair. It's the main one. If y'all is out here canceling appointments left and right to go on trips with your girlfriends, please plan accordingly and appropriately. Get your ca- your calendars right because we don't appreciate it. We don't. And you know what? The only time I ever feel like somebody's being honest about like a cancellation when they're offering you a service like that is when they're like, I am so sorry. This has happened, but I got I, you somebody else who's yes. just as good as me i promise you or at least they recommend some people or something like i'm gonna try and hit them up for you just something like that if y'all never thought to do that and you're a service provider not that you have to but think about your customer retention okay yeah because we both like to stick to the same people as much as we can but i'll be ready to drop these bitches everybody want to move to la and do all the famous girls hair and then it's just like what mm. about us and it's like you be wanting the girls to come in and promote your stuff yeah i can promote it but you don't know who i know and now that this bitch is famous you don't go with her and you you know what? And another thing, because I we repeat people. We're like, okay, I'm sticking with you for life. I'm gonna keep coming to you for makeup. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep coming to your hair as long as you are living. Nails. And we tell people about it and we be posting it. Mm-hmm. Don't play with me because I'm gonna and, start smacking. And that's why the girls be like, I'm not tagging you because this wasn't a promo deal. Mm-hmm. And stop taking pictures of me to use me as advertisement. Because when I wanna get into your books, you're gonna be acting like, who the fuck are you? And why are they always asking for our Instagrams? That's what. <laughs> Why are the policy list Are so you long? trying to decide if you're going to cancel on me or not? Or like, what is... I don't or how much you need to charge me. Well, that could be it too. But I like when the charges are laid out. Mm-hmm. If the charges ain't laid out, this is not the person for me. I don't really don't like all Don't you think somebody that. gives you a range? I've had people what give me a range. What is the range based on? I don't I know. I need to know what it's based on. I remember there was a girl. Her name was... Is Medina. And she did my nails. No, she was good. She was good. She had, I really like this and I wish more people would do it. She would do, she used to do my nails years ago and it was great. Mm -hmm. She ended up moving back to Detroit. She had to, family reasons. I think she's back for the summer, but I don't know if I want to go all the way to College Park to get my nails done. Anyway. Location matters. Yeah. Funky Cold Medina on Instagram and Funky is with an I. But she did so good. I don't mind telling y'all. But one thing I liked was you could book your appointment by how much you wanted to pay. And she would have it detailed like you can't have nails longer than this because it's going to be too much. But it's like you book your appointment for $140 for a set. Mm -hmm. She's not going put nothing on there that's going to be over $140. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to be hit with surprise charges. That's another thing y'all should probably consider. I mean, I have a laundry list of recommendations because the girls today, it's like, what sometimes I feel like I'm paying for a lifestyle versus a service. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't feel good. It doesn't. Oh, that was a great way to put that. Yeah. And it's like you trying to keep up or you want to do things. And I get it. But, bitch, I got a lifestyle, too. How right. am I going to give you a lifestyle and I'm struggling? Right, man. Because I done paid you all this money for some half ass shit. I just... It's rough. <sighs> Another thing that's just rough about hair, not even like the service, but okay, if you do get your appointment canceled, then you have to like figure out. I'm not good at finagling hairstyles. Like if I, when I went to Bali, I was so stressed because I didn't get braids. I didn't get the universal How look from going out? on vacation. So I went, got my hair done so that it could be flat, right? And healthy. And then I went to the African braiding salon and was like, could y'all cornrow my hair? But I have eye tips in. She was like, yeah, I got you. So like, You the went f- to the African to do this? I did. Okay. Wait. For the braids. Yeah, for the braids. Because some, I feel like you already had the eye tips. Sometimes they'd be pulling too tight. I would so be I nervous. might be bald-headed when they come out? Oh. But the hair probably would already came out. I mean, I don't know. But go ahead. Oh, well, hopefully We that. won't put bald-headed on you. Yeah. I just thought that's where the story was going. Sorry. <laughs> no. They braided it. And I went they braided to, it? I went to Bali and I wore my hair braided for like half of the trip. And the whole time during the trip, even though I was having such a great time, it was always lingering in the back of my head. Like, if I take my braids out, what is it my hair going to look like? Because I didn't bring that many hair products. Is it going to be able to maintain? You know, normally you got braids. Oh, yeah. And then you're not going to no beauty supply out right. there. And by this point, I, my hair wasn't straight and braided. Now it has curled up because I got in water. I was, you know, when you get real free and you're like, I'm just going to dunk. I'm just going to get in the shower. I'm just going to jump in the ocean. (laughs) I'm just going to have rough sex and sweat my edges out. Mm. So I took my braids out the rest of the trip. It ended up being cute, but then it got really nappy. And I was like, oh my God, I'm just getting braids. When I take my hair out, if I still have hair, I'm getting braids. Yeah, yeah. Hair or not, somebody going to be able to braid it. You go to the African shop. If you got one scoop of hair, they're going to be able to get you right. I need some braids. I'm tired of this. I miss my braids. I kept them in too long, but I miss them. I want them. So that's what I'll be doing uh, this week is looking for somebody. Hopefully I can get my braids done this weekend because I am tired. But yeah, I didn't really do shit. I just kind of hung out, um, hung out with friends. I caught up with some friends. Mm-hmm. Um, 
one day last weekend, I actually, me and Drea got together and we went, we hadn't like hung out just the two of us in a while. So we were catching up. We were at Devon for like five hours. Did y'all have fun? We did. And we were just talking, talking, talking. And I love days like that. Like I've realized, like I like going out and going to clubs and stuff like that. I don't really do that in Atlanta unless mm. it's a special occasion or like a birthday or something. Other than that, it's like, take me to dinner. Let's go out to dinner. We can even go to each other's houses. And I'm good. Now, out of town, it's a different time. But I feel like it's different when you're out of town. You know, you want to mm-hmm. go out. But I'd be tired, too. But it was just good to get out. And I ran into some listeners there, some old friends. And we just had a good time. And she had to change her flight because they were leaving for their tour the next day. And I was like, now you know. You got a 11 in flight. She was oh. like, yeah, you're right. Let me go ahead and. Yeah. yeah. Just, just do mm-hmm. it. I hung out with a friend, too. I forgot. I went to some place called Taranga City or Taranga City something like that I've heard of that they advertised at the station what was it like you know it was I thought we were going to like catch up and we were but we got there and it was more like clubby and that's you know when that's not what you're expecting like you want to be able to talk and hear each other yeah it was like we were talking in every 10 minutes you want a hookah I was like I'm good I'm no I'm good I don't want one it was just like we wanted to just talk and laugh and act like old women and we we couldn't do that we took shots and ended up drinking margaritas and I was like well glad (laughs) like I wanted to be more of a dinner situation but it was cool yeah I um I saw this thing i want us to do an episode on this in the future so you guys who are watching listening whatever leave a comment and let us know some things that you think of but i saw a reel and it was like things you start doing after you turn 30 for no reason did i send it to you no but please send it okay because i'll probably do everything on the list the first one was just like staring out the window for long periods of time just looking and the person was just like staring and i really be staring out the window just looking at nature looking at people just thinking feel it feels like i'm meditating a bit i'm just just clearing my mind. Another one was uh, riding in the car in silence. I do that all the time. People Girl. hate to ride in the car with me because I will absolutely ride in silence. I think it's the best time to think and just be. There have been times when I'm like riding, let's say like even on the way here, more than half the ride here, it was silent. I was like, oh, I was really like, was I meditating? Yeah. It's like, am I meditating? Half time I'll be talking to myself. Um, another one was um, checking the weather all day. And it was just a bunch of other little things uh, that I thought were funny. I could relate to so many of them. I was like, shit, I'm doing several of them right now. Oh, one of them that I was literally doing when my homegirl sent it to me. I made myself a glass of wine and I went to go sit on my balcony and just look outside. It was like sitting on the porch for no reason. And then when you sit down, you got to do a dramatic, like, ah. getting all comfy. <laughs> yes. I love sitting out there. Uh, but yeah, that. we got to do an episode on that. So if you guys are over 30, let us know some of the things that you have realized that you start doing for no damn reason. Yeah. Give me some things <laughs> to add to my list. Right. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, if you guys are interested in traveling, I'm going to Tulum October 6th through 10th with Paradise and Vibe. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go to paradiseandvibe.com to book now. After we go to Tulum, we will be going to Brazil and then we'll be going to Fiji. So make sure you join me on those life changing trips. Yes. And make sure you guys join the book club. I think it was like an episode or two ago. I was talking about the book Sugar. I finished it. Mm. And then I finished the sequel today. And the sequel was really good. It had a lot of answers. We're going to be reading the sequel um, in July. That will be July's book of the month. It's called This Bitter Earth by Bernice L. McFadden. It's a really good book. It's a historical drama. It's set in 1965, but it goes back to the 50s. And there's like some pieces that go back even further. Mm -hmm. But um, I highly suggest if you end up joining in july go ahead and read sugar first so that you understand it's available on audible also if you don't really like buying books because you don't know if you're gonna like them or not or you prefer like an ebook Mm -hmm. sign up at your local library because a lot of them have apps and they um they have digital downloads for free so you don't even have to physically go whether it's a digital download or audio book but the book is really good and i don't i can't think of the day of the oh this weekend actually um we are, oh no, it was last weekend. You missed it. Sorry, you snooze, you lose. But we're going to start doing in-person things with the book club. So we met up. I'll have to tell you guys later how it went because we're pre-recording this episode. But we're going to start doing things once a quarter to meet up and mm-hmm. just encouraging people to get out of the house, meet some new girlfriends. And we do not like, it's not like super intellectual. So if that's what you want, I'm sorry. We're not for you. <laughs> I mean, people can have, you know. yeah, it's fun. It's like sometimes you just want to, unleash and just do some fun girl stuff you know yeah so that and then what else did i want to remind you guys of 
Oh, y'all, we went on, um, what's the name of that podcast? Jack New, Thrillers. Yeah, show? Jack Thrillers podcast, New Jack City. I don't know what it's called. But Sorry. it was a good episode. It I was. I don't know what it's called either, but it was fun and it was, he was funny with his little eye. Yeah, it's available on the 85 South app. So if you guys are on that app or you go to the YouTube, I think on YouTube they only post clips, make sure that you let them know that you came to see us, Okay. Let them know in them comments. Um, mm -hmm. Also, we were on, I don't know if we ever said this on Shan's show. Oh, yeah, we were. We, on, we Lovers were and on Friends. Lovers and Friends <clears throat> podcast. Um, she has posted the video and the audio episode. So y'all go check that out and also drop a comment and let them know why you guys are there. Um, also, I went on another podcast. It's um, a part of the Tomorrow app. Um, which is an app for creators. I think that they're about to go through some changes with the app itself, mm -hmm. but they have a channel on YouTube called Women of Tomorrow and they just do, um, they interview different people. So I did an episode with Jasmine, one of the hosts of that show, just about what women want. Mm -hmm. And so y'all should check that out too. Mm -hmm. We've been out here working y'all. Yeah. Um, also, we have some big news. Mm. I like that bass line. <laughs> Uh, that sounds like a little Beyonce intro. Right? Like, we're about to hit the stage. Because we are. <laughs> we're going All right. It's the last call for cocktails. Mm -hmm. 2023. We are going back on the road just for a little bit. Um, we are going to kick off this tour at Sony Hall. In New York City. Yes. It is going to be Friday, September 29th. We're really excited about that. Then after that, we are going to make our way to Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte. We will be at the Comedy Zone again. And then we are going to Chicago and St. Louis. St. Louis will be a new city for us. St. Louis will be our first time. I'm excited to see what that crowd is about. Me too. And I'm excited to get some ribs. I want some barbecue. Oh. Like all I've been thinking about is St. Louis barbecue. I've been to St. Louis once because my dad used to live there. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to come back and eat. Um, I just, this maybe that'll be my first time that I try a rib. Remember I told you like, oh yeah. maybe I'm going to well, try Well, I don't know. Because, well, y'all drop us some places because I don't want your first time to be bad. I th it's not good. Why are you going? Well, St. Louis is this. I don't know. I got to figure it out, but I want to taste it first. Oh, I don't want to make sure like, to make sure it's good. Like, like I'm excited. St. Louis is known for barbecue, but I, I don't want to. Never wanna... knew that St. Louis. Yeah, there's. They have a whole cut of ribs. St. Louis cut ribs. I hear th St. Louis, and I think of the St. Lunatics. Okay, well, I just hear Air, For Air Force Ones, and they are known for that too. Um, then at the, both of those are going to be at City Winery. And I think that the St. Louis City Winery is brand new. So we'll be at City Winery in Chicago again. And then we'll be at City Winery in St. Louis. And then after that, we will close it out by going to Philly. And Philly. we'll be at the City Winery there on a Friday night. I think that's November 3rd. Philly has remained my favorite live show place. So hopefully they keep their name. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. We're excited about that one. Um, and then on that Sunday, same weekend, November 5th or 6th. I don't know. Y'all check the description box. But we are going to D.C. And we will be performing at the, the Howard, Howard Theater. Theater. So I'm so excited about that because that's like, it's a big deal to me. And it's going to be our biggest show yet. Say that again. That's it going to be our biggest, biggest show, show yet. Y'all, please come out. Show up and show out. We're going to be there. We need you to tell everybody. We're telling you guys well in advance this time. You have, uh, the show is going to be in November. Also, if you're interested in sponsoring in any capacity, um, whether you want to donate some items for prizes, giveaways for our VIPs, you have maybe a photo booth or some sort of service, you're a videographer for a photographer, whatever, mm -hmm. and you want to work with us or you want to sponsor something, please shoot us an email to sales at cocktailspod.com so that we can have somebody from our team reach back out to you and figure out how to work that out. We're trying to do better about working in advance. So y'all do the same, please. Don't be waiting until the week of. Please. If you're a comedian or you have mm -hmm. some sort of sexual talent. Oh, yeah. Some sexual talents would mm -hmm. be good. Send some interesting stories, yes. experiences, careers. Like, y'all be doing some interesting stuff in the world, and I would like to meet some of y'all, and I'm sure our listeners would, too. But hit us up. Even if you don't do it, but you know some recommendations, send mm -hmm. them my way. Please. We'd really appreciate it. Yeah, we would. Oh, I'm excited. Me, too. I can't wait. I can't wait. Start this. And I'm glad it's, like, close together, so it's not for the rest of the year, rest of the year, but it is the rest of the year. Yeah. 
I'm excited. It's a blessing. Thank you, mm-hmm. universe and God, if you up there listening to us. Yes, and thank y'all for continuing to show up and show out for us. We re- we appreciate it. And thank you to all of our patrons for going yes. an even extra step to pay for content. We really appreciate you guys. If you are not a member of our Patreon community, go to patreon.com slash cocktails to join now. Get some bonus content. Get to know Kiki and I a little bit better, our families, or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, get early access to live show t- uh, shows. Make sure you guys check it out. Okay, I don't know why my stuff keeps closing out, but I guess on that note, we can move on to weird sex, and then we'll finally get into today's topics. I don't know why I can't talk. Okay, you can't either. Yeah, like what is happening to my body? Did somebody put a spell on me? I ate a half of an edible. That might be what's happening to my body. Oh, what kind of edible did you have? I did the um, the one. I think it's called elevated state, but the one that has the high dosage, not the low dosage. Oh, you know they put two. two. They put I, two, read it. I found that out today. I looked at it. Well, one I says only had one dose. bottle that said Elevate. I got two of each. Oh, I did. I got a bunch of different ones. Well, it's a bunch of different ones, but it's two of each of the ones. Mm-mm, not in my mm. box. I Damn, they house. only gave me two of the high love. Hmm. I got to see what you got because I wonder from, if we have. This is the one have... where I was seeing the fireflies and the okay. ostriches. I definitely have Elevate. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. I haven't tried it. You said a man is not... A necessity, a man is a luxury, like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Or did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. Oh, I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Anyway, okay, weird sex. Okay, you guys, so this week's weird sex story, a lot of you guys were sending me this, and it was funny because some people use this picture of this booty-looking tree as if it was the real tree. I don't think that's the real tree. But um, anyway, there was a creep who got busted (laughs) having passionate sex, air quotes, with a tree in a busy park in the UK. So he got arrested for allegedly kissing, caressing, and having passionate sex sex with a tree with at a popular tree? park did it have and, bark yeah Jesus. um so the nature freak was caught on camera peeling off his clothes and rubbing passionately against the stump of a conifer in wiltshire's queen elizabeth gardens on tuesday afternoon well, what a conifer look like is it fine let me look at it i feel like a conifer isn't that like one of the trees that's kind of needly like a christmas tree i don't know Look it up and tell me. Okay, so somebody said, I was just walking in the park with one of my mates and we saw a man hugging a tree and thought it was interesting. We walked closer because I guess they just thought he was a regular tree hugger. Save the trees. You were right. How did you know that? Um, Science class a long time ago. Yeah. I really want to go on, are you smarter than a fifth grader? You should do it. Sometimes yeah. randomly, as in two days ago, I will go on YouTube and just watch trivia videos. And that's why I know so much random information. It's like I a know, piney weird. tree. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The more you know. Um, Okay, so they said that they walked closer, and as they did, they saw his trousers were down. Pull your Um, trousers? Young mm -hmm. man, pull your trousers up. Well, instead of telling him that, she pulled her phone out and started recording the thing like, I got you, bitch. Um, I started recording, and he just started taking off all of his clothes and kissing the tree. After I stopped recording, the police turned up (laughs) and started following the man around and then arrested him. Could you imagine you get booked for fucking a tree? Like... What's going on? I can't tell you how many times I've just lately, I've just been like, what's going on? Are y'all okay? Drugs. That's what I always think. Drugs, malnutrition, um, undiagnosed mental disorder. I think it's a it's a nasty cocktail of things going on. Because like, <laughs> how did that feel good against your dick? Is what I'm really wondering. Because you rubbing up on the thing, kissing up on it. That is crushy. Like, I don't like when I'm kissing somebody and I feel like, oh, I need some lip balm. Sunday. My lips. Yeah. And you Lotion. definitely do. Does like, anyone have anything damp I could press on my lips? Yeah. It's just like, it's crushy. So, like, you're kissing on it, rubbing on it. I know his hands are so callous. Like, don't ever touch me. You ever had, like, a rough callus on the bottom? I don't get a lot of callus on my feet. And yesterday I went to go get a manic- a pedicure. And you know, every now and again when you go get a manicure pedicure, you be like, I'm going to trick off. I'm getting all the extras. I want everything. Mm-hmm. Give me the jelly. Mm-hmm. And she put jelly on my feet. And, like, she was like, callus, callus. She was so adamant on it that I was like, okay, bitch. Well, all right. Get the callus on. It ain't that rough. I was mad. Because I was like, yeah. has my nigga been feeling this and just not saying nothing? 
It was crazy. I felt for myself. I was like, let me feel. Because sometimes they say it and you don't need it. So I felt it. I was like, go ahead and put it it. on. How much extra is it? (laughs) Right. Because whatever it is, I got to pay it. I ended up buying some stuff on Amazon Mm. to like pre-pedicure my feet because I don't want to be too shamed. And I've been shamed in there. It's Sometimes it's bad. It's like I've just been walking so much. I've got so much to do. I mean, it's been so bad that sometimes I feel like they're talking about me and I have actually considered learning Korean. Just so uh, I it's could probably surprise Vietnamese. Be like, I saw what? a video on Instagram and this girl had Google Translate on her phone and she just had it going. So first it's analyzing the language. They were speaking Vietnamese. And then somebody had said like her big toe was scary or something. And she was just like, what about my big toe? And I was like, no, I want to do that because some days I know it was a rough day. But hey, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to fix the problem. I'm not just out in the free world. Let my toes hang out willy nilly. I'm right. trying to correct it. Yeah, I'm paying the extra. There goes your tip, bitch. Anyway. And stop suggesting that we get something that we didn't come in for. Don't I don't want my mustache waxed. And I don't want my eyebrows done. <laughs> stop. Right. I know what I need today. Okay. And it's not that. I'm not going to you for that. Because last time I was in here, you burned me. And I burned on my face for weeks. And the last time I got my eyebrows done in a nail shop. Remember, I don't know if you saw the Instagram video. I was crying. She took off what half happened? my eyebrow and told me I came in there like that. Now no, I'm at the minute. front desk arguing. I'm like, and y'all better not call the police. I was like, you think I came in here like this? Tiffany fucked my eyes up. I was so <laughs> Pissed. I was pissed. I don't blame you for that. I I really stopped going to get my eyebrows done ever since I got the microblading. Ugh, that was because then I just do it myself. I can trim around the tattoo, and I don't really have to worry about it too much. Yeah, because that will piss me off. And even if they do fuck it up, hey, it's tatted on. So. Which reminds me, I need to do a touch up. Anyway, that's it for Weird Sex, you guys. Please keep sending in those stories. Um, I really appreciate it. it. Makes it easier, and it lets me know what you guys are into. Okay, Medina. I need to know if you have tried something. What? The Womanizer Wave. Have you installed yours yet? I haven't installed it yet. Should should I hurry up and do it tonight? You need to do it tonight. Like, do not delay. Install it today. Okay? (gasps) Let me tell you guys. The Womanizer Wave is... It's amazing. I'm just having flashbacks getting hot and like sensations over my body. So listen, it's a shower head. Mm -hmm. And so it attaches to a hose. It's really simple to install. Now I had somebody else do it, but he said it was really easy. So it attaches to a hose. So you know how you can clamp it, you can move it around your Mm -hmm. body and everything. I've never really tried like toys um, or shower heads as a toy, but this shower head, not only is it an actual shower head, it's like a... A toy clitoral stimulator. Oh. Yes, it's a toy. So there's three different functions on it. And then there's also a little slider that will increase the intensity of the water. And don't feel bad about staying in the shower longer because it actually will use 60% less water. So Mm -hmm. there's like this powder rain feature. And that's the one where it's going to be more spread out. That one feels really good just all over. I even been using it to wash my hair, honestly. But then there are two more... um, like a modes that you can put it on. Mm -hmm. So one of them has like this strong stream of like water coming and, you know, womanizer uses the air suction versus vibrations for things. I love womanizer, uh, the whole line of products, but this womanizer wave is amazing and they come in different colors anyway. So that one, I like to put that right on my clit and use it. It just feels so, so good. You could also put it on your booty hole and it's kind of like a bidet. Oh, yeah. I love uh, a bidet. When I was in Bali, all I was using was a bidet. I can't mm-hmm. wait to plug mine up. And then there's another one where it has like these streams that like are moving around and it just gives like this really great feeling. I mean, it's great for masturbation, self-care, self-pleasure and all that, but it also feels good. Like if your neck was a little sore or something. I mean, the Womanizer Wave is great. I think if you don't have one or you were looking for an upgrade to your shower experience, you definitely need to purchase this and install it like ASAP. Okay, you guys. Well, <laughs> I'm sold. Um, just so you know, Love Honey is the world's largest online shop for all things pleasure, including mm-hmm. toys, lingerie, and so much more. <laughs> so make sure you guys click the link in the description and use code COCKTAILS20. That's C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S-2-0. COCKTAILS20. Do you want to hear your horoscope today? Sure. Okay. It- Virgo daily horoscope. Okay. Yours says, if you're considering teaming up with others, bitch, you trying to kick me off the show? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm just playing. (laughs) First, you need to consider the effect it could have on your spotless reputation. Spotless. (laughs) Don't sing anyone's praises 
before you have the full story. You can privately offer your support to a friend who has made a mistake without running the risk of being painted with the same brush. I don't understand. Sometimes I don't be understanding. Mm -hmm. Let me write this on chat, GPT. (laughs) If you stand shoulder to shoulder with them in a more visible way, though, you might look like an accomplice. Mm -hmm. Contemplate your choice carefully. There are lots of ways to demonstrate your allegiance without tarnishing your own image. They went kind of dark. Let me read mine, too. Yeah, because, I mean... I found myself in situations like that, not today or not even all that recently, maybe within the past couple of months where people be wanting to do stuff together. But I've learned that lesson already. You don't always want to do something for somebody. I can help you and support you from a distance, but mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that we have to work together. Right. Um, I'd here's rather just not. <laughs> OK, here's here's the Libras for June 20th. Although you intend to get to get tons done today, it's easy to get pulled off course by your own variable mood. The cancer moon in your goal oriented 10th house, whatever that means, edges into a face off with intense Pluto in your emo for, fourth house, making it nearly impossible for you to compartmentalize. Ooh. So how should you handle the feelings that arise? Take a breath and give your emotions some airtime instead of keeping your nose to the grindstone no matter what. Reach out to a supportive friend who will listen and uplift your spirits. Even if the two of you can only connect for a quick call to plan an evening rendezvous, just hearing their voice will help. After your feelings shift, you'll gradually regain your focus and make some headway. Where do you get these horoscopes from? What app are you using? Oh, I'm going to tell you offline. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Because they ain't buying our app. Maybe they will. (laughs) But I love it. It's my favorite one. (laughs) Uh I like to use, when I do look at them, I like to use um, the pattern. And I like co-star. Now, I like those specifically for my own horoscopes Mm -hmm. because you have to put in all of your stuff. So it's taken into account everything, like Mm -hmm. all the different signs. But co-star, we have an attitude. And I just feel like that's a friend that talks to you rough. And I don't really like that. I'm really a sensitive girl. Like, what do you mean? Like, it's just like... It's just like too matter of fact. Like, bitch, you could soften the blow you about to hit me with. Like, you don't have to talk to me. Like, talk to me nice. Could you imagine if they made an app for horoscopes that actually didn't talk to you? And it was like, bitch, you know that was fucked up. And wait till Maybe I we s- should do it. <laughs> we should start being, okay, this is what she really meant. That would be hilarious. It's like, oh my gosh, girl, what? Why are you so sad? You're not supposed to be sad today. Or it's like, stand up yeah. and stop being a weak bitch. Uh, it could that be like people from would be crying and writing letters. We would be on from CNN. a black mama who yeah. don't play that shit. Yeah, That's you're like <laughs> you open it. It's like yeah, you're getting chubby. Oh, like, <laughs> now what would that be in the horoscope? Because it's just like applying things. It's like, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. You Damn. haven't been able to focus on anything. Like, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I would not download that. But maybe some gym. people like it. Yeah, You're like crying. Oh, that would be oh, so be sad. Huh, anyway. Huh, any, I'm trying to think. Was there anything uh, that was refreshing? Anything I else like, you had you wanted to share? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to think of? Um, I feel like I did something else, but I can't think of what it was. And it came to me when we were just talking about the horoscopes. Oh, I wanted to shout out uh, Girls Gotta Eat podcast. Mm-hmm. So Ashley had hit me up a um, couple weeks ago, maybe even a month ago at this point, and she was like, "Hey, we're launching a new product." Oh, I uh, got it. You got it. Yeah. Did you try it? I Which one did she yet. send you? It's a bag full of things. Okay, open the box so you can see what's in there because okay. I'm wondering if the actual toy that they sent is the same as me. Okay, they sent me a toy that um, they have an app. And it has these audio stories similar to like Dipsy and stuff like that. But their app pairs with their toys. And so it moves to the story. Mm -hmm. Like it changes as the story is going and you're listening to it. So I tried it out. And you and it also it. this might be what ended up happening might be my cocktail today. But um, it also has a feature where uh, if you're long distance, you can send a code to your partner and they can control the thing from their phone. Oh. Control the toy from your phone. That's sexy. And so, yeah, um, I've I've played with, like, remote control toys before, but it's usually, like, you got to hand the person an actual remote. Y'all did y'all shit with that one. It was cool. And the stories were pretty good. I think y'all could use some more uh, voices. Are they so, voicing the stories? Uh-uh. They have voice actors. Hmm. So, you know, somebody here is available. Maybe me. 
<laughs> yeah, but it was fun and I had a good time. I think I'm going to tell y'all about the whole experience later. If not that, I, I do have a cocktail that I'm going to share today. Oh, I can't wait. I love an OG cocktail. Yeah, Since we're doing a while. shout outs, mm -hmm. I wanted to shout out my good girlfriend, Lauren. She let us use her space, Boxwood Social, for a photo shoot that Kiki and oh, I yeah. had. Y'all um, see the photos right now. Yeah. And so it's in Marietta Square. Mm -hmm. It's an event space. If you guys are interested in going there, having a wedding or something like that, a baby shower. It was shower. really spacious and cute. Yeah, it was super cute. So shout out to them for letting us book a lap last minute photo shoot because we needed a bar mm -hmm. um boxwood social follow them on instagram and tell them we sent you yeah okay this week i put a few things um from my scattered mind on the topic so we can just um jump around i wanted to talk about relationships of course <laughs> If I'm, Medina don't want to talk about nothing else, she don't want to talk about love and relationship. Always. I said, oh, you went home for four shit? I have a boyfriend. Okay, but he ain't no daddy. Like <laughs> she going to let you know, my man, my man, my man. I but love I to see say, it when people are happy. Before I even got in a relationship, I've always loved to talk about relationships yeah. and love. This is just one of my favorite discussions and topics. Not that one topic that we all be talking about all the time on Instagram. Um, but other than that, yeah. So I want to talk about with you balancing... First of all, what do you think the longest relationship that you've been in has been? The only one I acknowledge that was any significant amount of time was about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, it was fun, but I was I was in my early 20s. Um, and I feel like those relationships are easier because it's not that much life happening. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have the weight of real adult responsibilities because whether you're still in school, like part of that time I was still in school, part of it I was out, um, but we broke up shortly thereafter. But um, being in school and having the support of your family and being in a college setting or you just graduated college, so it's still kind of college-ish setting it's just different than like a relationship now. Mm -hmm. I'll be ready to drop everybody or they be ready to drop me. I'm just not a relationship girl. It stresses me out. It's too much. It's too much. But okay, you asked I that literally, to say. <laughs> did you see what the next question was? What's the next question? Would you consider yourself a relationship person or for oh, the streets? Oh, I read streets? it earlier. Okay, well, I don't consider myself for the streets. And I wanted to make sure I, I said that I don't feel like you got to be one or the other. Mm -hmm. What I don't, I like having somebody, right? Or somebody's, uh, depending somebody. on the time. But the responsibility and work that goes into relationships, I don't like it. I don't. That was some, that was honesty. And I yeah. like when people are honest. And I think that, especially with me, people, because I'm not usually in relationships and I'm usually single, people try to make me feel bad about it or like, is something wrong with How? me? What? Um, By saying, like, people will say it's a red flag if you're over 30, no kids, very few, if any, long-term relationships. But I feel like- But is like that on Instagram or someone has actually said that People to you? have said this to me and then this these are discussions that people have online or I can be in a conversation where they're not- talking about me specifically mm -hmm. but they're saying these things so it's like well bitch you didn't know that this is me and that it applies but mm -hmm. I feel like for me it's not a red flag and I'll say that because I recognize things about myself and I'm not gonna fake like I'm doing a relationship just for the sake of being in a relationship when I know that that's not really what I want mm -hmm. and I feel like that is a bigger red flag people who jump from relationship to relationship when they don't always want that now if that's what you want and you meeting somebody it doesn't work out and then you meet somebody else Cool, but I think that a part of taking accountability and just being more self-aware is knowing what you want and what you like. And it's like, I don't be liking a lot of the shit that goes on in relationships. And if you and know I, you're not a relationship person, I'm not. That's good. That's and it's a like, positive. Yeah, and it's gonna take for me to really be serious and totally committed to somebody, it's gonna take a special person and a special set of circumstances for real, because it's a lot of shit I don't like. It's about to make me sneeze right what now. What are you not like? My computer's about to die. Oh, no, where's you, your phone? My, my charger's right there. <laughs> um, I knew I should have took my Zyrtec. Um, what don't I like? Yeah. I don't like compromising on <laughs> things. Really? You keep smacking us with honesty. That shit. Uh, we gonna keep it real, real today. Do it, anybody else but me, I don't want to. It's not Because happening. this is the thing. When I think of compromise, because it's not really that I don't like compromise, but when a man presents compromise, it's usually... 
one of us is going to get what we want and the other one is not. It's not like we're meeting in a happy medium. And I feel like that's what compromise is. You give a little to get a little on both sides. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when I've been presented with a compromise, it wasn't a compromise. It was, I won't get what I'm asking for and you will. And the compromise is instead of bitching about it, I'm supposed to be quiet. And I don't like that. Now, I feel like sometimes you have to, both people need to be bending. That's what compromise is in my mind. Or mm. even if it's like, okay, in this particular situation, it has to be one way or the other. There is no middle ground. Okay, well, then next time we should do it my way or something like that. Like there needs to be some sort of balance. And I find that a lot of times the people who push compromise don't be doing that. And I also don't like when the man is comes at me later like, well, I compromised on all these things that you wanted, but you didn't say that. You went along to get along, and I didn't know that you had an issue. I didn't know that you didn't want something because when we talked about it, you said whatever you want. Don't tell me whatever I want because I'm going to do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Like you got to, I feel like you got to speak up for yourself too when you don't like something. And I might not like it either, but that's okay. It's better, I think it's better for you to speak up and say that you don't like something or you want to do something different than to wait till after and you've been festering and upset because you didn't like it. But the niggas don't be doing that. They just, they complain or uh, they try to make me do what they want me to do. And I just, oof. I, I think that's how you know bird. it's just not. It's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. It's just not, it just wasn't a match. Y'all matched in other areas and just not. And just not that. It's, it might be fun. It might be good for a little bit, but it's like long term. Mm -mm. And then it's like also for me, when I'm thinking about relationships with somebody, I'm not thinking about for a season. That's just some fun shit. That don't really count. Mm -hmm. You know, like we can go together and play around and we can have the situation tips and stuff. And I know that it's not going to last always. I might not even claim you. Sorry. But because I know it's not it's not a it's not real to me. It's not something where we're really trying to talk about building a life together. And that is that's just how I feel about it. Before I got here, I was talking to one of my girlfriends on the phone and I was sitting outside so we could finish the conversation because it was just such a good conversation. You know how when a friend is telling you something about somebody else and it has to do with like heartache or like something about to end and you can, I feel like we've been through that so often that you could feel the past. And you need to send her some cookies or like send her something and just tell her it's going to be okay. Because when you get older and you're dealing with like a situation ship that you thought was a real ship. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's and it's not <laughs> or you don't hear, the first time you don't hear from somebody that you thought you liked for like a whole weekend and you're like i know you fucking somebody nigga. <laughs> and then you just want to tear his shit your up your heart is just you call your friend everything you know gonna be is bad for whatever. you're sad you don't want to talk you crying. You crying and you don't want to tell Listen certain to people because everybody's like, well, was that nigga giving your boyfriend? It's like, shut the <laughs> fuck up, bitch. I still have feelings. And he knew it. And we, I hate when people say that shit. No, he wasn't my boyfriend. Does that mean everything disappeared? The way that I handle other people going through heartache now is so different from when we started this show. Like sometimes mm -hmm. it would be like this like tough love situation mm -hmm. or like you you ask all these questions which sometimes I do think some of those things are still valid but for the most part it's just like I take myself back to a time when I was dumb or sad or hurt or and sometimes I think it's not even what you say is how you say it and sometimes you, can you don't even need to say you just need yeah, to sometimes be you can like oh I know are you okay what you need mm -hmm. and then just just do that I think we could all um, take a moment sometimes the next time somebody comes to you and they're going through it. Even if you think it's like, damn, bitch, you dumb as fuck. We didn't already went through this. Just proceed with a little caution. Yeah. And just try and give them some care because, yeah, that shit is dumb. And when they come out of it, then you can talk about it and talk to them rough. But you know how it is when you're going through something. You're not trying to hear that. You know, and you it's not going to help. You about to make your friend pissed off at you, too. She got to do something to somebody. And if she can't get to her <laughs> nigga, you really want her... Tell, it's, and it's the worst falling mm. out over a nigga. You be sad, or even more sad. This one, this was dumb. Real dumb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was about to, oh, me and Hannah, it was one way that we like help each other through the heartache, because sometimes you also just don't want to talk. Yeah. And so we'll send each other different songs to listen to, to either like a, <laughs> a upbeat one to help you be like, I'm a bad bitch. Uh -huh. I know I'm, I'm a about bad, to get through this. Fuck. Yeah. And, or the ones that just gonna make you cry even more. Mm. Yeah. Because sometimes you gotta let it out. Yeah. If you've been bottling it up too much, you gotta let it out. Mm. Maybe we should do an episode on that. Where we're just crying bitch, and letting it no. out. 
oh. bad bitch playlist and how to lift yourself up okay. instead of because I think we did one like heartbreak songs and songs like that, but we need to do a bad bitch one. We do. Mm-hmm. That'll be a good one. Mm-hmm. That'll be a good time. I'm about to dig into my vault. My mama sent me a bad bitch playlist, and that's what she listens to when she's in the car. All the time. What's, is it old songs or new songs? I feel like new your mama song. probably got some new, new songs. songs on there. Yeah. It's, and some Trina. Yeah, some Trina, Meg the Stallion, Cardi B. Callie, she likes a lot of the city girls. She be hip to the music. Mm-hmm. Um, Cardi B has been looking really fine lately. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you look fine. She does. Did you see the uh, the clips from the birthday bash? Mm-hmm. It looked fun. She had brought out Lotto mm-hmm. when, and they performed Put It On The Flow. And she had her bag. And I was like, what? Not Lotto. Cardi B. I'm like, Cardi B, why do you have this Birkin out here on the stage? Was I guess it that it, mint green one? Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess it was for, for the prop because she was doing some and she had to set it down. But I said, well, bitch, if I had one of them, I'd carry it everywhere I went to. I'm not leaving in the back with you ghetto people. <laughs> <laughs> ghetto I'm, people. I'm not doing that. Uh, but it looked like fun. I want to go to a concert. Well, I'm going to Beyonce concert. And I'm so excited about that. That's it's on your birthday. I know. And he's are you going? Did Wait. you get tickets? So I haven't got tickets yet, but okay. I'm going. Okay. Do you know what city you want to go in? I don't know if I'm going to go to Arlington since it's close to my birthday yeah. or somewhere else. I don't yeah. know yet. Um, You're going to Houston or Arlington? Houston. Ar- okay. Houston is on the 23rd. I don't know why I thought Arlington was the 23rd. Mm-mm. Okay. It's Houston. So I'm going to that one. And I kind of want to go to the one in New Orleans that's a couple of days later, but that's right before the New York show. I feel like I'm doing too much. So, but Ooh. we'll see. Um, see, but that'd I, be one of the things you'd be like, now how am I going to have my hair? Is it going to get messed up at the concert? What uh-huh. do I need to what do? What am I going to wear? Right. I can't wait to go. One of my friends went in Barcelona. That's where I really wanted to go out of the country. Me too. I wanted to go out of the country. I wanted to go to Barcelona or Paris. And obviously, bitch, I was here. But it looked like so much fun. I have been enjoying watching Blue Ivy <laughs> every week. I was just about to say. I think And she looks more and more confident every exactly week. That's exactly what I was about to say. And I think it's really cool how, like, Beyonce's letting us see that. And it's mm-hmm. almost like she's creating who, who she's going to be already. Like, you're not going to be shy. You're going to already be prepared. And like, imagine, like, if this is really something that Blue Ivy has wanted to do, right? Your mama is the queen. And she's like, okay, baby, you want to go on tour this summer? Yeah, Rumi, you got to watch from the stands like I used to do. Everybody passing torches. I just love it. Because I saw a video it? of Jay-Z and Rumi. I, and Rumi is watching. I said, I remember when Blue used to do that. I just feel like I'm in the family. I just wonder, like, can Blue Ivy sing? I do I wonder, wonder that. too. Or does she want to rap? Because she got mm. both best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Or like, how is she going to go back to school after this summer? Like after touring with you, like they're yeah. going to be in and class. Like, like, what did you do this summer? School I or Disney not, World. she got to homeschool till October because I want to see her on the stage in America. Oh, I bet Beyonce's like, I'm not bringing my baby to these crazy concerts. You now. think so? Y'all don't know how to act. I think she will. I hope she does. I just feel like the state's big events are too crazy, and she's. Well, we're gonna, we be gonna like, see. She's gonna go to some other places before she gets to Texas. So I just feel like she got to perform in Houston. Yeah, and it's a Saturday. You don't even have school today, hun. Come on. <laughs> Pull I know you out of school. Beyonce got pulled out of school. Bring the whole school. And start bringing her to some different hair salons to perform. So mm-hmm. we can see her also. <laughs> Shoot. Blue Ivy would be like, I don't think so. I could see her now like a hair salon. Baby, I was at a stadium in Barcelona. You think I want to perform in a hair salon? I turned Beyonce into my opening act. I think the fuck not. That would be crazy if mm-hmm. Beyonce did open up for Blue. Yeah, I saw something that was saying just everybody's been waiting for Blue and it's almost as if she did turn Beyonce into the open act. And then just seeing Beyonce smile at her. It was much better than the clip I saw today of her looking at the stagehands who didn't get her horse right. And I know somebody's getting fired. Somebody's on a one-way trip back to America right now. because And she even looked and said, oh my God. She did. I didn't see that one. Oh, I'm going to show it to you when we finish. Yeah, she was hot. Hot, hot. This is random. And she sang that last note real strong. So, you know, it's probably two or three people getting fired. Oh, and she was probably hungry. Mm-hmm. So now she you ain't really... 80, 84 days. <laughs> she looking slim. Very. Um, This is random. But did you... Uh, What was I going to say? Oh, have you seen this craziness? This First of all, Brian McKnight and Fuck Russell him. Simmons. Yes. I just found out I about all the shit. I was like, what is going on? Again, are y'all okay? No. Fox is I've been done with Brian McKnight 
since Ryan McKnight disowned his other children. That's what they were talking about. He now posts on his Instagram like he doesn't even have any oh, other Oh, so you kids. haven't even seen the latest mm. stuff. No, I just so, saw it when I, like, okay, last night. And I was like, this that's is with wild. The kids. the kids aren't even his blood kids. It's step kids. Yeah, well, he has a new one that he named Brian McKnight, too. But he already has a Brian McKnight <laughs> Jr. That is, oh, I was really like, this is crazy, It's Brian. wild. Thanks for making me a girl dad. You have a daughter that is your flesh and blood. Like, that's got to hurt. And I feel for his older kids, because, like, what the fuck? Um, but no, he was cutting up on Anita Baker's tour. He was on Anita Baker. I love he was opening that. up, I apologize. opening up, or being a featured act for Anita Baker. And apparently, something happened. And I don't know if he was late or he took too long to do his set. But he's an opening act, so Anita was like, "You're done. You need like, to be it's done. Over. Don't do that to Anita." Apparently, she called him Kenny's crazy. She said, it "Kenny's." Was Kenny. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, never mind. That's not Brian McKnight. That's baby face. <laughs> like, wait, Wrong what? nigga. My bad. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just spilling the tea on Brian and really it's... Well, fuck Brian. I would rather fuck, attach still fuck to Brian. And what? Kenny, yeah. baby face, because baby face was cutting up too. That is and, wild. Y'all, you too old to be cutting up, baby. Right. What is going on? But yeah. Um, and then who was the other one you said? Russell Simmons. First oh, of all, yeah. I didn't know Russell Simmons moved to Bali. Wish I would have known when I was there. Didn't know that he moved. Because you know he had all them allegations. Yeah. I was like, what? And now I saw Ioki. Ioki asking, crying on Instagram. The babies is crying. The mama crying, asking everybody. What? Russell in the comments talking about, I'm sorry. I said, that's some shit my daddy would do. You know, we just had this conversation. He posted a picture of one of his daughters and I I was reading the comments and somebody put, she said she don't fuck with you, Russell. Right. <laughs> what? He called her. He said that they are a house of bitches, a house of cunts. What? what he texted her. Apparently there's an issue. I don't know. Apparently there's an issue going on amongst him and uh, Kamora Lee Simmons. And he wants the girls to pick sides. And she was saying her mama never made her pick a side. She just don't be wanting to talk to him sometimes because she's 20 years old. She's in college. Like sometimes I don't want to talk to my dad, which to me is understandable. Every time your daddy call, you don't have to answer. Like it's not about an issue or whatever. You don't have to answer, but he got mad that she wasn't taking the side and said her mama was a piece of shit. And she said that he talks to us so bad. He calls us names. He talks about my mother really bad. And we just shouldn't have to hear that. And she was crying. I said, boy, rich people problems are wild. Yeah. Because this is what you on Instagram crying about. Scroll over to the next Instagram live. I see somebody crying because they can't figure out GoFundMe because they rent is very, very late. And I'm like, see, it's just <laughs> really, really different. I like to follow a variety of people so I can see what's going on in the yeah. world. I but I don't know what was going on with the daddies and on Father's Day. On oh, Father's Day. Day. Kamora said he'd be sending himself flowers saying it's from her. And it's not. <laughs> Why is that? What are Because you... even old people be caught up in doing it for the gram. I don't know. <laughs> but I do think he did that shit. Whatever they said he did, I think he did it. I honestly do too. I normally think that with most and you men. Got with I'm Kimora, like, what did he do? He did And it. you got with Kamora when she was 15. Mm-mm. That was I wild too. But then I was looking at Kamora. I was like, man. Okay. But Kamora was a kid. I'm looking at her parents. Why y'all let this happen? Does she need money? Is that what oh, right I was, now? Yeah, that's what to me when people get then. on the internet oh. now, like crying oh. and like now you want to tell all his business. Like, what do you need? Maybe it's money. I don't know. Then Aoki was crying about not being on the health insurance, and I'm like, what's going on? Have you? Because <laughs> I mean, okay, insurance social is media insurance. has really made it to where we can really be diving into the business of others. Why? Why did I wake up wondering what happened with Russell Simmons <laughs> and Kamara Lee? I be wondering stuff too sometimes. I didn't think about them this morning, but I mean, sometimes I do wake up like, well, wait a minute, I ain't heard from this person in a while. <laughs> Even like regular people, I'm real bad about regular people. There's this lady on Instagram. Her name was Nina Corso Queen because she had a Corsa. Uh, what is that dog? Kane Corso? Oh, I was about to say Corsicana, but that's lemonade. I was thinking Corsicana too, but that is a city. Oh, and um, it's lemonade. It's lemonade? Corsicana lemonade? Oh, I, I mean, heard. orange juice. It's a lemonade brand or something. Okay, well, it's juice, that's for <laughs> sure. Anyway, one day I got concerned because she used to always post her food. It didn't really look good, but it was covered in pepper, like black pepper. Um, just everything sprinkled in pepper, no matter what it was. And so she had just stopped posting her food. She was cooking for her husband, Albert. Albert had got her a new stove on their anniversary. And it looked nice. And they was going to events. She worked at a stadium somewhere. I forget what city. It was like Cleveland or something, I want to mm -hmm. say. She worked at a stadium. And then I wasn't seeing her post. And I was like, well, she's older. Did she forget her password and lock herself out and create a new page? So me, Thomas, and Grace all on the internet, because we didn't all started following this lady. We're commenting on her stuff, trying to figure out, are you okay, Nina? Did something happen? Because you... Did she die? Mm -hmm. 
It's whole a lot. Time. You get so invested. <clears throat> she didn't die, y'all. She just stopped posting on Instagram and had moved back to Facebook. She was done. And said, I'm going back to the old folks. Y'all doing too much. And I was reels, mad. hashtags. Fuck this. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of being going in like figuring out people's lives, have you watched the Ted Bundy movie, the new one on Netflix? No. Okay, it's from the perspective of his girlfriend who was with him when he was killing everyone. I didn't and even know he had. I a girlfriend. didn't either. And he. Sh- Why is she telling her story now? She's not. It's not. Somebody else is telling her story. I'm oh. sure she didn't want want it to get out okay however it didn't so it's from her perspective like she didn't know that he was doing all this and anyways after that i was like tad bundy was in court acting crazy i'm talking about he was cracking jokes he represented himself he asked his new girlfriend that he had met in jail to marry him on the stand it was crazy so then i was like there's no way this stuff happened so then i get on the internet and i'm like did tad bundy really it popped right up did he really do what he did on the netflix yes so we started looking at that then i'm like tad bundy had a kid because he got the woman pregnant because she came to visit him and the guard let him have sex behind the vending machine he got her pregnant <sighs> tad bundy has a whole daughter who doesn't want anyone to find her by the way but we, i bet yeah and she is they on. gonna find you boo they yeah i'm sure they already found her i can't mm-hmm. remember where she lives but i was just like what that is crazy crazy you gotta watch it though it was interesting mm, yeah i'm gonna have to check that out um huh, well we really went on a little talked about all kind of stuff today <laughs> uh is there another relationship thing you want to oh, talk about before I, we move on i wanted to touch base on when you said sometimes people make you feel bad for being single oh yeah and i, and thought- I just feel like i gotta do what's best for me why am i Doing shit that I don't want to do. I know that's right. You speaking for the niggas. This and sometimes I feel like I am a nigga. Like, stop doing shit that you don't want to do. Because the real the, niggas. Yes, this because the more the I niggas, realize it. The, <laughs> the more I realize it, I'm like, people have been saying I'm a nigga for a long time. Jokingly, I it am. Breaks it. And I have. And it's like, also, I had to put myself in their shoes. Now, y'all don't get mad at me, ladies, but I'm just speaking from my own truth. Sometimes I get why niggas are hoes. And if I was them, I would be the biggest, baddest hoe, too. Because I get it. When you don't really want to settle down for whatever reason, and it's just everybody else is pressuring you, too, that doesn't feel good. It's like if you don't really want to settle down, you have great things going. You have different women who satisfy different things in your life. Mm -hmm. Why you got to lock it down? I'm, if you don't want to now if you meet somebody and you do just want it to be y'all okay but i just think some of y'all get into relationships prematurely because of other pressures and you got i just wish more people would be real with themselves about what they actually want now if you don't want to be a hoe or you're not good at being a hoe don't be trying to do that just to do it to impress your boys mm-hmm. you really want to be locked down lock somebody down and i feel like if you if you're trying to gauge like well how do i know if i want to be in a relationship or how do i know if i want to be single i feel like try them all and then mm-hmm. figure out what works for you. But also if you keep And does it trying, make your hands itch when you talk about And does about it make you feel like everything is a force or combative? Mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like that's something that's that I, a good point. Yeah, it's like when you I've noticed that about myself when I'm with, when I've been with people and I've been with a lot. And it's like everything I'm like, and he wants me to listen check yeah check in or listen it's like the, that's so that's normal like it's okay and that, i don't like it but it's like if i like you enough i'll be like i'm just it's gonna not check a problem it's, it's not a problem because i'm gonna do it anyway yeah you i made it people ignore that a lot but i was gonna say that it's funny that you're like some people make you feel bad for being single it's <clears throat> now that i'm in a relationship and trying to be like in a healthy happy relationship and all that stuff i am a relationship person um, it, people have made, single people have tried to make me feel bad about being in a relationship and it's the most awkward what do they feeling. Do? It's almost like, okay. It's almost like this feeling of like, and maybe it's because some people are freshly broken up or bitter. dating isn't fun. I don't really know what it is, but I also don't think it's, everybody should mean be. Mean and bitter. Like <laughs> Cher says in the weird sex thing. Mean and bitter. I love men. <laughs> But it's this vibe that people that is given like, oh, well, and if you're in this relationship and well, when he cheats on you or when he does, and it's like, what? That's not really, what does that have to do with anything? Or, and you're hanging out with your boyfriend all the time. I, that's one thing that really upsets me when like at our big age, when friends say stuff like that, when it's like, I'm getting to know somebody. Mm-hmm. And if you could just give me a beat to get to know the person and really pick my, t- choose my time, how I want to you know, live my life. I met a person. I like hanging out with them. I'm getting to know them. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think that when girls get in relationships and friends start having falls about who's who's getting more time, calm down. Like everybody take think, a deep breath. 
I also think that if you do have a friend, whether it's a new relationship or an old relationship, whatever, and they're spending a lot of time, sometimes I get it. You might miss your friend. You want, you miss hanging out and mm-hmm. maybe your friend doesn't want to do the things that they used to do or whatever the case may be. I think that a better approach, if you're the friend that's missing your friend and upset that your friend is in this relationship or not even that they're in the relationship, but that they're hanging out with someone else, mm-hmm. maybe just say, I miss you. Can we plan a time to hang out instead of doing all of that stuff, accusing you of stuff or getting an attitude with you? Because I think at the root, it's just like you're frustrated because you miss your friend and you can Which miss your friend and say, <laughs> just say hey girl I miss you can we find some time for just me and you to hang Mm -hmm. out and then schedule a time and then if the friend doesn't do that or they're not receptive to that then that's when you make the adjustment Mm -hmm. but sometimes you just have to speak up and say I miss you it's not that I care that you hang out with your friend or an issue or now it's like you're blaming it on since you got your book let's not be passive aggressive I don't like when people do stuff like that Mm -hmm. or when it's a situation where it's like a group hangout and you're like I'm gonna bring my boyfriend and now everybody has an issue now if it's all girls cool but if y'all are bringing niggas that don't matter why can I not bring my nigga that does it's like I, I don't like when it's like okay to bring the 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 niggas that everybody doesn't mind having around. It's like they're gonna be paying for everything. Cool, but like if I if you know I'm in a relationship, it shouldn't be an issue if I want to bring my boyfriend. Again, I understand if it's like because yeah, I'm like, well, what this you is bring not, your boyfriend to? <laughs> if this is not the time or the place. I'm not. A, I'm bringing my nigga everywhere. But if it's like we're meeting up for brunch and y'all got niggas coming for brunch, they might not be your boyfriends. But why I'm not you, coming to chill with everybody and, and they niggas and that not y'all niggas? Can I bring my nigga? Yeah. He cool. Why are we assuming he ain't? Yeah. Like. I don't know. I just think it causes this thing where it's like, okay, well, I'm not coming. <laughs> well, and that's how it's got to go sometimes. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just got to sit shit out. I do. That's weird. It's weird. It, it, Cause I was wondering, I was going to ask, is it like an all girls thing? No. And you bring him, but and if I'm it's thorough like, with guys, hangouts, so I'm like, okay, what is it going to be like? Yeah. Like, just like, what are the, t- can we bring extra people? Can we not bring extra people? Are boyfriends allowed? Cause I understand situations where boyfriends aren't allowed, but I don't think that the question are boyfriends allowed should make people feel some type of way. Or- it shouldn't. You just say yes or no. Right. And, and if, if you want to bring your boyfriend and it, boyfriends ain't allowed. Okay, cool. Well, I'm not gonna be able to make it. Why it's got to be a fallout? Why are you mad that I'm not going to... She don't come to... That's not true. First of all, it is true. I don't, I don't come do to anything. I the whole shit y'all doing. Yeah, but I mostly <laughs> don't come to anything. But that's not because of a nigga. I'd be tired. <laughs> and to me, that's understandable too. I think that as we all... I, I want to stop saying getting older because it's making my wrinkles come in now. I can feel Girl, it. let's just go get some Botox. Yeah, I was trying to schedule an appointment on the way they were closed already. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, let's do that. Uh, we have a Botox date. But... Um, I was going to say, damn, I forgot. Oh, as we all get more comfortable with who we are and what we want as there individuals. We go. Come on, preach. Speak up about the things. When you miss somebody, instead of being passive aggressive and saying all the stuff that they're not doing or whatever, speak up about it. And also- Stop trying take- to live like it's a reality show. It's not, y'all. This is real life. And I had to have a talk with one of my friends because she told me that she was upset and she was feeling jealous because I had been hanging out with one friend in the group so much and not her. And I let her- her say whatever and I was like yeah but you don't return calls in a timely fashion you don't make the effort I also get tired of always having to be the one to invite you out you hang out I see it I'm not mad at you for hanging out with your other friends if you want to hang out with me all you got to do is shoot me a call or a text even if it's last minute and if I can make it, I'll make it. And we both have to be accountable with that. If you're going to be answering your phone now, I can start calling again. But I'm, I'm real sensitive when it comes to stuff like that. If I call you too many times and you don't return my calls or it takes you two or three days to respond, oh, bitch, I'm not calling you. You're done. Mm. Not done, done. But I'm done <laughs> reaching out. Like, now you need to do it because I know you see these mix, missed calls. I know you see the text messages. I understand being busy. I understand even you don't feel like it. You don't owe me an explanation. But don't think I'm always going to be reaching out. There's some friends I'll always reach out to and there's some that I won't, but I I really love and respect the friendships that I have where it's like they know that I still want to be invited. I'm probably not coming and I do love you and I'm going to send a gift and I'm going to talk to you (laughs) always on the phone and text and we can send memes back and forth. I love I love the memes They understand it. Yeah. We've been getting good at that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another thing that you could do sometimes when you miss your friend. Don't send no passive aggressive stuff. Just send funny stuff or useful things or helpful things or things that make you think about them. But just in your friendships, relationships, whatever, take a moment and and check yourself too with Mm -hmm. how you're approaching things and what's really going on before, you know, you really lose a friend for real. 
Yeah, I don't. I got about 0.5 of a friend. Girl. So, <laughs> I can't afford to lose. I be, y'all, we good still. Are you mad at me? Um, okay, so on that note, we are going to move on to Indecisive Diane. And when we come back, we have some advice letters to read. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's- do you want? What do you want? Hey, ladies, it's me, Diane, coming to you with all the summer festivities to meet men, to take your mans, or for your mans to take you, no matter what the situation ship. I wanted to let you know the Ice Cream Festival at Piedmont Park is July 22nd from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Go there. I went last year and there was a lot of single men. Go there, ladies. Bye. Are you looking to form deeper, more meaningful connections? Mm -hmm. Are you curious about your sexuality Mm -hmm. and are ready to explore unquestioned aspects of your identity? Mm -hmm. If you're looking for more than the conventional dating apps, Field might just be right for you. Yeah. I downloaded it. Okay. And so <laughs> what wait, okay, so you downloaded Field. So what are you looking for? What so I wanna give my boyfriend a threesome for his birthday. I mean, that's the best place to go is Field. That's gonna make it easy. It makes it so much easier. And I'm like, I literally put that in the bio. It's direct to the point. Yeah. And I bet it's like easy to like sift through profiles and you can see who's open to that sort of thing. That's what I love most about the Field app. Uh-huh. Everybody is so open minded. Like it's literally the app. For open-minded sexual people. Field values sex positivity and encourages you to share your desires and interests directly on your profile so that people know what you're into. Exactly. You guys are always hitting us up, asking us how you can meet women or you want to, you're feeling by curious. You want to have a threesome. Mm -hmm. You want to try these different things or where the freak bitch is at, you know, whatever it is, this is the perfect app for you. You need to go and get field so that you can find people who are into what you're into. And it'll be an easy way for you to like meet them. It's just like a regular dating app, but better. It takes some of the stress off. A lot of people Mm -hmm. are nervous and Mm -hmm. this kind of takes all of that away. So for a limited time, a list Listeners of Cocktails will get a free month of Fields Majestic membership when you download the app for the first time. Just use the link in the show notes to download Field. That's F-E-E-L-D. You can download Field for free or head to Field, F-E-E-L-D dot C-O slash cocktails and get access to your free month of the Majestic membership. That's F-E-E-L-D. The link is going to take you field.co slash cocktails. You'll get access to your first free month of the Majestic membership. Now, this is only if you haven't used the app before. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're already in there, sorry, you missed out. But you already know how great it is, so it won't even matter. You guys, go download the Field app today and try it out. Use our code cocktails, and you will be able to try it free for a month for the Majestic membership. Good luck to y'all, and good luck to you. Thank you, girl. <laughs> Okay, and we are back from Indecisive Diane. It is time for the advice. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on the show, please email us, advice at cocktailspod.com. Okay, this one is titled, He Might Be Bisexual, question mark. Hey, ladies, I love the podcast. Y'all really helped me get through my work day. I be at my cubicle cutting the fuck up. <laughs> I would love to catch somebody listening to cocktails at work. I know, right? Record a video and send it to me. <laughs> Please, because you ain't supposed to be working. Anywho, I'm a 30-year-old straight woman who met a 34-year-old, 34-year-old straight man at a bar about two months ago. Let's call him Lamont. <laughs> okay, Lamont. Everything was going well with us dating. He was taking me on nice dates, bought me some clothes as gifts, even thought to buy me a buy my dog a gift one time and we overall spent a lot of time 
and nights together. Disclosure, we have never had sex. Lamont has great taste in sneakers and has a large co collection. He also wears a lot of colorful clothes. Not like a rainbow, but it's like he takes good care of his laundry. Everything is bright and full of color. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. even his boxers and socks are colorful. Not mm -hmm. your standard Hanes boxers or Nike socks. They are colorful. This raised the first red flag for me to wonder if he was bisexual. Because what man that's not an artist or a fashion designer likes all these damn colors? While getting to know each other. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. While getting to know each other, he informs me that one of his closest friends is a gay man. Oh, I just had this conversation. Okay, okay. Let's call him Trent. I'm not homophobic, so... And I, okay, I really don't give a fuck. That's a long, uh, okay, I didn't know I was going to get that. I really don't give a fuck. They've been cool for years. So who am I to question their friendship? But this did make me ask, Lamont, made me ask Lamont, was he bisexual? And he said no. Anywho, he proceeds to tell me how it could be controversial if I ever met Trent because Trent thinks that Lamont is his man. I was what? like, what the fuck? I told him that I didn't like that and I don't care to ever meet Trent. Keep him the fuck away from me. And I brushed it off because I like Lamont and wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. But why did you keep being cordial with a gay man who has a crush on you and you're heterosexual? One day, Lamont and I are out having drinks and we're talking about how Trent's birthday is coming up and how he's going to go hang with him and, his, and their friends. I ask, are the rest of the friends gay too? How many gay friends do you have? Trent tells me, yes, they are all gay and he has at least five gay friends. I ask him, does he have straight male friends at all? And which friends do you hang out with mostly? He does have straight male friends, but he hangs with the gay men more. This is, a, this is strange to me because I've never dated someone with so many gay friends and hung, with, hung out with them on a regular basis. I promise I'm not homophobic. But what entices a straight man to hang out around gay niggas instead of straight ones? He told me that the friends aren't feminine and if they were, then he wouldn't hang around them. Whatever. Last straw. I was getting dressed <laughs> to go to a gala, a gala, whatever. I hate week. that word. Because which do way too. does it go? Gala or gala? <sighs> The weekend that Lamont went to visit Trent for his birthday, I was looking damn good. So I FaceTimed Lamont to show him that I, what I had on. He declined my call. He said he was hanging out with Trent and he likes to give people the respect that they deserve when he's with them. So therefore, he doesn't answer the phone while he's out, especially if he's at a bar. No, nigga. You didn't pick up because you were with your man. And he obviously don't play that shit. I ended up cutting Lamont off. He tried explaining how I had nothing to worry about because he is not gay and he spends all his free time with me because he likes me. I couldn't shake the feeling of him being on the down low or at least by, but I'm not about to be competing with Trent for him either. Do y'all think I was wrong for cutting him off? Do y'all think I'm tripping for thinking that this man is bi? Sincerely, a woman who's not playing gas games at my big age. P.S. Don't label me as homophobic either because I'm not. She, okay. Now she's telling us, ma'am, you don't want to say. Because really, we can label you how we want. But <laughs> what I'll say is, one, you are you keep asking if he's bi. You asked him if he was gay or bi or whatever. He said no, right? Yeah, he said he wasn't. Yeah. He just has all gay friends. Okay. So I think an important thing to remember is he's right. Some men are not like feminine. I think we have to get out of thinking that every gay man is super effeminate, right? That's one thing. Two, him hanging out with them doesn't make him gay or by him wanting to fuck them does. So if he says he doesn't, I just I just hate that you feel like because he hangs out with these guys that that is what makes him that. But if you feel uncomfortable and you don't like it, then you're not wrong for cutting him off because it's going to make you uncomfortable and it's not something that you want to be fighting and arguing about. I don't I wouldn't advise anybody to stay in a situation where they think that the nigga that they fucking with want to fuck niggas too and you don't like that. You're not into that sort of thing. Would it bother you if he told you that he was bisexual? Ask yourself that. I think yes. Um, because you think it and you still cut them off and it didn't seem like, I don't know. I just think like if you don't like something, whatever it is, it don't matter. Leave him alone. But I do think you're wrong for thinking that he's gay or bisexual just because he like loud ass colors. He might be from Florida. I don't think you're wrong. I do think that nigga's gay. And I <laughs> think that you're not wrong for cutting him off. And it's okay. Move on, sis. Move on. Like, whatever, move on, because yeah. you're not happy. That's the bottom line. And that's always my thing with it. Whether he is or he isn't, you think he is, and you're not fucking with him, you're not going to respect him as 
a true partner or anything. So what you gonna stick around for? And now for? you want true crime because you spied you on just, him and found him Lamont and Trent booty button. Or you didn't, and you just spend all your time going down a rabbit hole looking for shit, and you don't ever find nothing. You gonna drive yourself crazy, and then you just gonna be crazy. Who want to be crazy? No, I don't want to be crazy. Me either. <laughs> uh, good luck on the next uh, person that you meet. Yeah, tell us right. how it goes. So this one says young t- young tender uncle them Lord. <sighs> I'm just nervous for this because I feel like I'm going to think this nigga is too damn old. But let's see. Hey, y'all. First, I just want to say I love watching y'all. Continue coming through for the girls. So I'm a 23-year-old female and I have a situationship with a 36-year-old male. I hate when y'all be saying female and male. I don't know what it is. Like when people are like, oh, those females. It it really doesn't bother me. Even when everybody was getting upset when, uh, who said it? The little know. football player and everybody was so mad. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Another scandal that we saw on the gram. Huh. <laughs> I had all the hot topics and everybody today. Everybody was so mad that he said a female. And I was like, should I be offended? I was like, am I supposed to be mad? I'm not mad. Yeah, if you're not mad, I just don't like it. It's like, why are we doing this? I'm not a dog. But anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Okay, so you're 23. He's 36. He has two children um, in their teens is what I think you meant. And you have zero. We've been kicking it for the past two months, and the sex has been great. I don't know what this emoji is. Um, we're on Google Docs, so you know they get a little distorted. Um, he always asks to take me out, but I always decline. Why? I'm an introvert. Oh, he answered immediately. I'd rather stay in the house and chill type of girl. He serves me a oh, weed, I guess, is what that emoji is for. Huh, that's a cute little one. It's like a leaf mm-hmm. spinning in the document and gives me whatever i want or need i grew feelings for him but in the beginning i told him i just wanted to be friends Mm. he told me he wanted to buy a house for me us in parentheses that Mm. threw me way off when i asked him what what are we he told me we can go as far as i want it left me confused he has a lot going on and he travels a lot i don't want to get in between all of that I don't really ask about other women or his baby mamas because he told me he wasn't dealing with no one else. He doesn't have social media. I tried. (laughs) I tried to do a background check and didn't find anything. He had, he, that's grammar. He hasn't given me any red flags. He haven't gave me any red flags. Yeah, that's how you wrote it. Uh, He makes time for me and stuff, but I just don't want him to feel like I'd be waiting around for him. Okay, he is a good ass dad. And that makes my pussy wet, too, by the way. This is my first time dealing with an older man and a man with children. I'm used to the young niggas my age. So my guard is so up. Please give me some advice, y'all. Hearts. Hmm. What you think? I think I think you the problem, really. Well, I, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, look, my new outlook on people that focus like solely on what somebody is spending on you and what they're doing and the promises that what they're saying they're going to do and it has not even almost happened yet. Like I want to, I'm gonna buy you a house, baby. Mm-hmm. That's a red flag for me. That's not especially you're not like in a it's relationship. Yeah, it's, y'all don't even know each other. You don't even know if he has the credit. But you're funds. not going to know if he does because you won't even go nowhere. Like, he's trying to take you out on dates and you the one declining him. Yeah. Now, that's crazy. But have you told him, I wonder, that you're an introvert? Because there are still dates that you guys could do where you can go out and do things outside of the house besides get high and fuck that don't involve a bunch of other people. Yeah, I'm not. like, what? It's her question. That should she keep talking to him? Um, I don't really know. She just wants some advice on the whole damn situation. I don't know. I think, and then you talking about, this is when I feel like people be trying to talk themselves out of a good thing sometimes. You're talking about he travels a lot and you don't want to get in the way, but you're not in the way. And you said that he makes time for you. I mean, Uh, it it might be a situation where he's out of her league and she's kind of feels intimidated. Yeah, that's kind of Mm. what it's giving. Mm. And then also you don't really know because you're only making time to fuck him and get high. So like, yeah, he has time for that. Let the man take you on a damn date if you want to explore this shit, because it could be all right. A lot of women don't know how even though they talk a good talk, a lot of women have a hard time letting a man be a man per se. Like it's and take the lead and take the lead or do things that like a gentleman does. They're looking like. 
why he doing it? And it's like, I thought this is what you wanted. Like, let him do it. Like, like at, at least give it a try because you might also find that you're not as introverted as you thought you were. Maybe you just haven't had any good experiences or somebody who had you feeling comfortable enough to get out of that shell. Yeah. You can't just be high all the time, sis. Because I feel like you can easily push your way into like aloneness not a, not oh. even aloneness like the category that the man will put you in when he's like he's just gonna play with you and like bring you around when it's time to play because he was smoke. really interested he was smitten by you and it's like oh this the one even though she young as hell um uh, this is the one and i want to take her serious and i want to do these things but you won't even let him so it's like well fuck it i'm not a i'm a good man yeah so it looks Savannah. like you really don't know what you want because you probably don't and that's okay and you probably don't because you're 23 yeah, like okay. this is gonna be a practice for you i have so many old niggas yeah. i used to fuck with and i'm like i really fumbled that because i didn't I know, know the fuck i fumbled I was a few yeah um, I, more ooh, than a few i was ooh, like god wait. damn i could really be if i knew then what i knew now i think you should let him try to do these things and see what happens because he might not be playing niggas do be playing he but, probably not buying you a house yeah get over the house part but he can take you on some dates and show you some new experiences and maybe even learn a few things about life and just dating and men in general. This don't have to be forever, bitch. You 23. Yeah, have fun. Now text that nigga right now. Yeah. Shit. Act bad. Ain't that what Carisha's saying? That well, might be your diddy. Bad. Oh, don't? I thought that's what we wanted to do. Well, not not with him. I mean, she can act bad with the other niggas, but like, don't be bad. Like, he sound very... Wholesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, tell you us how that and goes. Stuff. And then we hope that we gave you some good advice. Yeah, good luck. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, we're going to move on to cocktails, but we only have time for one. So, Kiki, you have an OG cocktail. God damn it. And I didn't decide which one. Okay, so let me just tell you guys. Yeah, I do have a cocktail. But if you ever have a cocktail that you want to share on the show, make sure you email it to us. Cocktails at cocktailspod. Dot com. Okay, so I want to tell you about this shower sex experience mm -hmm. I had one day. So this was, um, I don't remember what it was. It doesn't matter. I needed to wash my hair. I used that womanizer wave mm, to wash my head. head. Mm -hmm. But I didn't take a shower alone. So I took a shower. With a human this person was in yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. So, and I said it in the ad the other week. I meant it because I experienced it. Do you guys know how good it feels to be in the shower with a man and not only is he washing your hair but then you have this womanizer wave toy that you get to use too so it's gonna it's got the hose on it so it can get all the stuff so you can really wash your hair but he washed my hair he massaged it he ate my pussy in the shower use the um the shower head and it has different like pulses and like just the way that the water jets out, used it all over my body, but then especially concentrated on my pussy. I sucked his dick so good after that. Mm. It just felt so good. And it's like when you do nice, soft, sensual things like that, like I have to be thankful. So after the shower, my hair was still fucked up. I had to make an emergency hair appointment because I thought it was white. And so I just let it go. And that was a horrible idea. But we got in the bed and we had sex for the rest of like, the day time that was left and it just felt so good i did look like cousin it the next day it's okay it was worth it but it was worth it and it just felt so good so you guys try some shower sex let somebody wash your hair massage your scalp eat your pussy and make sure he book you a hair appointment after because it's gonna be fucked up mm, i can't and wait that to try was my experience when I yeah install it. That you sounds, still haven't installed it i'm waiting on the hose oh yeah yeah mm, they, they well. need to send me that hose also i want to tell that young lady that sent that advice letter you and your bae should go to paradiseandvibe.com book the trip to tulum because it's romantic and daters are coming and come that'll be your first travel with him and you can mm. still be an introvert on the trip if you want just don't leave the hotel <laughs> yeah and just hang out with him yeah anyway good luck to you guys i hope you guys enjoyed uh this week's episode please remember to rate review and subscribe if you're watching on youtube make sure you subscribe click the little bell icon to make sure that you're notified every thursday when we drop an episode and if we ever come out with any additional con content Leave some comments for us. Sign up for Patreon. Get your tickets to the live shows. Um, get your tell Vesper. Your friends. Use our code. Mm -hmm. Get your Vesper. That's cute. And that's another toy that I had an experience with on a date before. I have to tell you guys about that another time. Mm. I love a little toy date, you know. Um, sign up. Go to paradiseandvibe.com and check that out. Check out the book club. Check out Classy Base. 
tour tickets. Make sure you get them. We need y'all to buy them up real quick. Mm -hmm. So we can be excited when we get there. And um, follow us on Instagram. We're at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. And until next week, you guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. 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 has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you.